Have you ever wondered what it's actually going to cost you to become a digital nomad? You know, the monthly expenses in a digital nomad hotspots like Bali, like how much do you need to save and what kinds of things do you need to buy initially? And we're going to answer all of that in just one second. But first, we have to talk about the things you actually need to become a digital nomad. So when it comes with the initial costs of becoming a digital nomad, you need to know that first you have to invest in some proper gear. And by that, I mean everything that you have to have in order to not only travel good but also work while you're traveling that's very important so my mindset and manu's mindset is in that regards very different than most people because most people they want to just have the cheapest things that they can find so that they can do the thing that they want to do but our mindset is a little bit different we want to have always the best quality so that we can do what we are doing in the best way possible for a long period of time for example i don't buy a cheap laptop for 500 bucks i buy the most expensive one with the best quality that i can find so that i can use it for years and so that it doesn't break because i had incidences in the past where something cheap broke for example like a microphone or so and then i had to replace it and it broke again after six months and then again and i had to bought it three times so by that time i could invest into a proper microphone like this one for example which lasts me a lifetime basically so with that mindset like the first thing that you actually do need is a quality backpack i mean one of those bags that you can comfortably have in the airplane cabin one that has maybe like 30 liters maximum 40 liters a really good quality and one of those backpacks should last you at least like five six seven or more years and that's what you need to keep in mind so one of those probably like 300 bucks and when it comes to working remote the most important thing that you have right now is your laptop if you don't have one it's gonna be very difficult for you to become a digital nomad because everything that you do is tied to that thing so you need a proper laptop at least like 1400 of invest get something that is not plastic something that is easy to use and something that you can easily buy in another country for example let's say something got stolen or so you can easily replace that and that's why we're also in the apple ecosystem because everything is in the cloud you can just download everything that you had on your laptop have a copy of that and once you have to replace your machine everything is the exact same as where you left off so this is really key here you don't want to stress about software things and the hardware components and everything just invest into something that is proper and that you can work with comfortably and i don't care if you're using high-end windows machines or high-end mac machines i don't care about that as long as it's doing the job and it's good quality go for that all right, Sam just mentioned before the backpack in terms of transportation of your items. And that works for the laptop and maybe some other stuff. But still, if you're on the road or on the flight for a long period of time, you probably need a little bit more space available. So a small suitcase. And again, here, focus on quality so it doesn't break right away when it gets thrown around by the people on the airport, which is usually the case, right? So it, it lasts and it's quality and, and you don't need to replace it like five times a year. That's really another thing you want to consider in your your list of what you want to get to become a digital nomad. And with speaking of technical items, when we work remote, uh, there is like almost always some sort of calls or meetings going on and while we can argue about the picture quality of like having a webcam if you have a decent laptop usually the webcam is okay-ish these days but what's a big no-no is bad audio quality like if you watch a video with bad audio quality like you're gonna not watch for a long time and it's the same when you have meetings especially when you have meetings with clients or you're trying to close a deal remotely like you want to make sure that that is a pleasant experience to talk to you to work with you and to hop on meetings with you and that's why you want to have a proper mic you don't need to overdo it like we have here in, in the setup like uh, that's a big overkill for traveling I also have a light version of this uh, equipment that I have with me but I do have an extra mic don't use like the laptop stuff that is there that's usually crap especially those noise cancelling ones that are the, the noise cancelling is great <laughs> but the, the microphone sucks and it also gives you a lot of authority if you have a great quality mic you're suddenly perceived as someone who's an expert in what they're doing and this is a huge advantage and also with that hand in hand goes the smartphone that you have we noticed when you go to different countries it's always a good idea to have a smartphone with an eSIM capability so that when you arrive you can just download an eSIM to your phone have local network and then go from there you don't have to have Wi-Fi in all the places right so you can just rely on your normal data connection and that's it so for that 
that, I would say 1200 bucks is sufficient to get you a decent uh, eSIM phone. Also, when I travel, I noticed when I fly for 16 hours, 20 hours, I usually get sick or something <laughs> like in every third flight I have or something uh, because the planes, they are dirty. So I take medication against allergies, medication for the flu or something, take something for that. And in terms of the medication, depends on what you need, I would budget for that like a hundred bucks or so. Next thing that is really important when you speak of medications is the whole topic of like what if there is something worse than like a little bit of a flu or like you have an accident or whatever it is and that goes in the topic of like insurance and uh, like when you go to a vacation like a holiday that you do maybe like two three weeks a year that is usually covered by your insurance from home but when you suddenly start like traveling full time and you're going to check up for like a doctor or dentist or whatever in foreign countries usually that is not covered and you have to pay that yourself so when you switch to the digital nomad lifestyle you also want to take care in terms of insurance that this is covered on a global scale and what we recommend you is to really go in full private i think it's called like that as well in english sam uh, it just yep. means like you're private not private insurance global private. coverage yes in terms of like uh, you don't need to like queue up in the public hospitals for hours because that's usually the case in many countries and and it might not be like as comfortable as you had it at home and so you just want to be able to take the best service if you need it and don't like save on that terms really get something good that usually starts 200 300 dollar depending on your age or medical history and also like how much you have like as a minimum that you pay yourself in in certain cases so that is something you want to take care of for sure next big budget point is the whole cost of living in terms of like hotel airbnb is it rental like depending on how long you stay in a single place that might vary generally it's easy to say the longer you stay the more discount or the the cheaper you can go with for example long-term rentals in case you stay like two or three months in a place you can negotiate that also on airbnb i think it usually starts on a week and then on a month you get even cheaper if the people offer you that and in terms of the budget it really depends where you are on this planet right we all know like of course uh, some countries are cheaper than the others and we would say like generally it's safe to say somewhere between a thousand five hundred to three thousand dollar on a monthly base should be considered for this with this amount you can make sure that you have a proper state to live where you can have your work set up you have a proper internet connection you have a quality of life and you're not like staying with 10 people in the same room or you have like small dirty places where when you hop on a zoom meeting or have client calls like it looks like a mess behind you and yeah it's just not a good setup maybe in a, in a big city you have like a nice view that also gives you a good feeling when you work you have sunlight for me it's very important to have like a lot of natural light and not just being like in a room in the middle of like a, an old building complex and have no light uh, that's horrible for me so i i would just recommend you to like get yourself a proper place when you want to do this for the long term and then the next point that we have here on our budget list is the transportation obviously there are costs involved in plane tickets and, and things like that that you need to budget for but when you only travel like short distances let's say you go from barcelona to lisbon or something the plane tickets are really cheap but if you go for example from Berlin to New York can be way more expensive than that, right? So in terms of the whole transportation cost, I would budget for 500 to a thousand dollars because you have also the these small things like when you, even when you stay in a place, you have things like car rentals, Uber, or you rent a scooter somewhere or something. So that's why I'd also put something towards that each month, right? And then obviously you need to have some food and depending on what you like also varies a lot. But in general, we spend around like 600 to 50 hundred depending on where we are right now and we like to eat out so for me sometimes can I even go up to 2k a month it really depends on how often I go to a nice restaurant or something right so in general like I said I would um, go for 600 to 1500 for that and also when it comes to going out going to restaurants there are some activities that you want to do for example you go to Dubai and you want to go jet ski skydiving and fun things like that you also need some sort of capital for that so I would also budget like 500 or so so that you can do these things that you want to do but don't overdo it because it can be a distraction of course right so when you're working all day or so and you go to jet ski after that that's totally fine but don't neglect your work because you're doing all these activities because the temptation it is there and it is real and it gets you like i've seen people 
going on trips and starting the digital nomad journey who are just in vacation mode all day long and they don't work and then the income drops because they're not closing deals anymore and that's what you really need to focus on right keep your habits in check but that's a topic for another video the next point on the list we have your phone and internet that is not for free as well we would budget maybe like a hundred it really depends also on the country and the bandwidth you need i remember like a few years ago when eSIM wasn't a thing we had like this i think it was called skyroam you had like this device and i think that the biggest plan was like it was either 100 or 160 and you would have like internet in like a lot of countries and uh, if you go with like an international or you get uh, like an international plan or you get like eSIMs everywhere i think that's a good starting point to go with in in some western european countries if you need huge bandwidth or north american you might go beyond that but like uh, that's like a safe zone there and then after all those things you need and you're usually spending money on every month or before you get uh, to make this transition we also want to shed a light on the topic of like what if you want to go back what if an economy crisis happened what if a pandemic happens again or something like that that just makes you like have to change your plan go back home start all over again and in that terms it's usually smart to have like at least six months of cost somewhere in a bank account or saved up or in an asset that you can liquidate pretty quickly just to have like peace of mind when you start doing this whole thing and maybe like going out of your comfort zone and, and starting something new in, in that terms. And when we're speaking about personal finance, it's super important that you start right now, if you don't do it already, that you put at least 20% of your current income aside so that you can build your emergency fund first. And then after that, you can start putting the rest aside and start investing into some things, right? And then once you have this emergency fund, let's say you want to become a nomadic closer, for example, and you want to have the ability to close any anyone who's closable and generate commissions beyond 1000 1500 per close that's a good thing you can invest into mentorship for example so that you can learn the skill way faster than just doing it by yourself and trying to close deals without proper education trust me we've done all the mistakes we've tried it alone and it's never a good idea to do things without a mentor right so that's the way that you do it you build the emergency fund first then you invest in yourself and once you have the ability to close the deals and you have a really high income Income, then you can diversify and think of building more passive income streams and things like that yeah but first you have to start very small with the emergency fund and, and for that we recommend starting with 20 percent saving from your current income so when we take a bird's eye view at everything we just talked about there are like two parts of this whole thing on the one side we have the things that you need to become a digital nomad which is like an upfront investment that you need to get started to kick it off and to make the transition as smooth as possible and then on the other side, we have like monthly costs of living to eat, to transport, to fly, to get around, have some fun. And for all that together, the monthly cost comes down to this. And so if you're thinking of the costs of becoming a digital nomad right now, you'll also be very likely interested in how the exact timeline looks to become a digital nomad. For example, what's important 12 months before you start or six months before and eventually how you make that transition as smooth as possible. And we recorded a full step-by-step -step video on that topic for you and you can just click here right now to watch that.